presenter today is Fatima Delgado. She has a PhD in sustainability and climate change from the University Polytechnica of Catalonia in Barcelona. It's been a great series and I really appreciate all of you who have participated in our Plant Rich Diet series. So I just wanted to thank everybody. All right, so Dr. Fatima Delgado is the founder and director of the Sustainable Tapas Project. She recently completed her PhD and is a researcher at the Polytechnic University of Catalonia in Barcelona, specializing in sustainability sciences, complex systems, and ecosystem services. Dr. Delgado completed the Cornell Climate Online Fellowship in 2019 and that fellowship was very similar to our Network Climate Action online course. So for those of you who are in the course, Dr. Delgado also had to do a Network Climate Action Plan and implement it. And her project, her plan, Network Climate Action, was the Sustainable Tapas Project, which she'll be talking about today, and also how she used complex behaviors and social mobilization approaches to climate action. So with that, I'm gonna stop sharing. We have 67 people on the call and 68, so we're getting more and more. And um, I'm just super excited to have Dr. Delgado present today because she, she has done such an amazing job of applying what we learned in the fellowship and starting a brand new project that is now expanding beyond Barcelona to other countries in the EU and elsewhere. So welcome Fatima from Barcelona, Spain. And if you want to share your slides now, we're ready to go. Hello everybody. Uh, I'm more than happy to share with all of you. We are now 75 people and I will start sharing. As Marian, every is 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 it sure? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, okay. So as as uh, Marian mentioned before, I was also participating in the Network Climate Change Action uh, last year, and this is how we at first I started, and now we are a team working on sustainable tapas project. And, and we are more than excited to start this presentation. So first, choose one. Okay, so we start, just a moment that I'm... So Sustainable Tapas Project, uh, we uh, want to uh, adapt and put in, into, into practice complex behaviors and social mobilization approaches to climate action. Uh, first, uh, first, before to start talking about the project, is about I wanted to first uh, share with all of you the diversity in terms of our team, in terms of our background and our origins. Uh, I'm Fatima, I'm from, I live in Barcelona, but I'm from Ecuador, South America. As Marianne mentioned before, I am a researcher in different fields of sustainability science, complex system and ecosystem services, especially in South America. Then uh, the first four months, the, the thing, it was me and some friends were collaborating, but then now we are starting to become uh, a community and we are planning to uh, become a, a startup in the in the field of food climate action community and this is how uh, Senia she's also from Ecuador she is our communication audiovisual production advisor and she also have a, um, a experience in cultural management then we have uh, Gisela Ibanez which is from Barcelona Spain She's a communication and fundraising advisor and also a zero waste activist in uh, Instagram. And then finally, uh, but not least, we have Agustina, 
Frescum and she's from Argentina. I read someone that the, in the chat was from Argentina and she's our design and graphic arts advisor and illustrator. So as you see, we are very diverse. We are a female team uh, promoting and bringing uh, real actions in real climate actions into a real project, but not only a project, now we are a community and uh, hopefully, and, and we are sure that we are going to do it, uh, a startup. So how Sustainable Tapas was born, first, as uh, uh, Marianne mentioned at the beginning, yeah, we start, I started with Cornell uh, Climate Online Fellowship last, last year. Uh, we were 38 fellows from 32 countries uh also with the help and the participation of 13 u.s students from cornell climate solutions course and everybody was working on their own climate action project and uh my idea at the beginning was like okay i have this background and on in the in the research field of climate change change but how to bring more practical but also but at the same time accurate and have this sign based uh, solution but put it into practice in a real climate action and that's why i found the cornell climate uh, action uh, fellowship a great opportunity to bring these two sides i have these in mind this uh, systemic and ecosystem service um, research view but i i wanted to be more into how behavior, uh, human behavior can, can be uh, uh, assessed, but also can be a commodity to work and to implement these climate actions. Thus, uh, this is the, the way we started. I started, try to put into, into, into practice behaviors through social networks. It started at the beginning in our experimental project from October until December my own social network uh with uh, this uh, this spread of behavior is called complex contagion and also social mobilization uh, uh, framework uh, application after this uh, this background the action plan came to life to tackle climate change by scaling up individual action through social networks we use as a framework uh, the Drown Down project. I guess some of the participants of this webinar, they are familiar with this, uh, pro this uh, framework. Uh, but this, is, um, this is, has been the work for uh, the last years of many scientists that are related to climate change um, uh, fields and, and research. And the project, what I like the project is the perspective of giving solutions. When we are talking about climate change, sometimes it can be very confusing. We have a lot of science-based research all around the world, very good material, but then how, how to bring this um, sometimes intangible and, and worldwide problem into real solutions. The Drown Down project, what they do, they, um, they have uh, ranked the solutions in terms of the sectors that are, um, that are involved in the solution. For example, this ranking is related to those solutions that, um, that have a higher impact in terms of climate action. What it means, how many gigatons of CO2 equivalent can be reduced or sequestered if we take actions in these solutions. This is why I, in that moment, in September last year, I was, okay, how I can influence from my, my, in my own social network, but also from my own, uh, from my own work, I decided, okay, I would do, I will go for reduced food waste and plant rich diet transition solutions. Um, and because it has a, a like, an immense and higher impact in terms of, for example, if we see this, this uh, matrix in terms of the scenario, scenario one, which is related to all, all the solutions that can be uh, reachable from the range of, of the IPCC um, uh, range of, the, of degrees from 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius. So 
this is reflecting the amount of, of gigaton CO2 that can be reduced, but also we have the e-scenario too that is more ambitious. What if we really uh, work into, with all the sectors that are involved, for example, in these two solutions, uh, into achieve uh, uh, the threshold of 1.5 degrees? So that's why I, I, I thought, okay, we, have, we know that are very diverse sectors immersed of these, of these um, solutions, food waste or these problems becoming solutions. There is food, agriculture, land use, land sink. Uh, and sometimes we are asking people, we are asking uh, politicians and institutions to take part of the solution, but the, the scope and the purpose of the climate action was bringing individual solutions and I found this, uh, that's why I'm remarking the, the focus that is very important, bringing solutions from uh, this, the third and the third place in, the, in, the, in this ranking from our individual behavior. This is how we, we create a sustainable tapas project. We want to know who influence, uh, who make an influence in, in whom and in changing behaviors related to climate change impact. Our objective or my, my initial objectives related to sustainable tapas was first, understand how behavior change diffuses through a specific social, ne social network. In my, in, in my case, my own friends and colleagues from the PhD, um, um, from the university um, uh, network that I was in, uh, that I've been involved in the last uh, five years of my, of my PhD, how I can use incentives and persuasive social communications through, to induce people to change, how I can understand uh, understand how the structure of my own social network influence climate behavior change by identifying a, a strong ties that can, they, that can be able to drive behavioral changes in climate change. But also, uh, I wanted to, to see the implications of applying social mobilization principles in spreading climate action. So that's how uh, the application of diverse strategies came to, into reality. Uh, I, I work in this, I designed it at these four phases. First, starting with complex contagions uh, approach, which means uh, I was uh, pursuing the, the identifying what are the networks, subgroups with the strong ties that can be able to adopt new behavior in my own social network. Second, how can I use uh, the tools and the skills of social communication to target um, a specific communications um, a strategies at central leaders in my own network and apply other social marketing strategies that I will be explaining later. And third, uh, how, to be, how to bring um, social mobilization strategies, which are called panic, uh, into real ac activities in my own project. This is how after all this process, a four-step model was, um, was induced to create a project or a climate action. In my case, in terms of reducing food waste and uh, starting a transition to a sustainable or plant-rich diet. So the spread of behaviors on, on cluster networks. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Why clustered networks? Because repeated contact, contacts with your closest network, these are the type of network that will help to spread complex behaviors. Networks with the strong ties, uh, this is how the spread starts to happen when every person in your cluster also has its cluster network. So sharing uh, complex ideas uh, like uh, changing diet habits or starting reducing food waste or starting re, uh, stop smoking, like the uh, very, very complex and difficult 
behaviors on, on human um, psychology, they are more easy to share if they are done in small groups. Uh, it's always the better strategy. So uh, the diffusion of behaviors, we were implementing four strategies, which are a strategic, complementary, credibility, emo emotional contagion, and legitimacy. And second, in terms of complex contagion, uh, complex contagion application requires some social reinforcement in terms to bring a strong interpersonal uh, that that asset can affect uh, strong social ties but also social reinforcement because which uh, which help us to spread our climate action in other in other words what we can say is uh, in the uh, any person might pay more attention to a behavior relative prevalence among all of his contacts, uh, which will bring more adopters against non-adopters uh, in terms of spreading a new behavior. We were also implementing uh, the social reinforcement that I'm talking about, and also creating wide bridges to our nearby neighborhoods in, in terms of the, the, the network. In other works, these concepts, how they were uh, brought into, into practice in our project in Sustainable Tapas, we wanted to create a climate action project based on hands-on and pure learning activities. First, we map our cluster network in which people, uh, or my friends, or contacts, or colleagues, were sharing overlapping contacts. Overlapping contacts would mean um, which is to say multiple contacts in order to spread the climate action. Second, we, uh, we choose or I choose friends we have already agreed environmental mindset. So they will be helping, helping to, re to reinforce um, first to spread the, the climate action, but also to reinforce ties among potential adopters of behaviors or those who were more um, uh, against of the idea to change diet habits or they were open to listen to to it so that's uh, that's the way uh, uh, a starting point to uh, to start create a community we also were creating we were doing activities that that were um, permitting face-to-face -face communication and developing trust between not only me uh, uh well me and the as a the organize or um the, the the person the founder of sustainable tapas but also among the participants uh, how we did it in through experiences which are called the sustainable tapas events sustainable brunch uh, night uh the way we were um at um uh, marketing in social medias in the way we were creating the events from a visual um, design, design art perspective, and also allow people to make commitments uh, through challenges, which were mostly 15 day challenges. And we were, uh, I was in that moment, and uh, I want to be very sure that people were really changing their habits. So uh, we were assessing their behaviors um, in terms of food waste, in terms of diet habits, before, during, and after uh, the challenges as a way of, of gamification by not only uh, filling up uh, surveys, that's, that's one of the, the instruments or tools you can use, but also um, reinforcing community through WhatsApp groups to um, uh, Instagram. And because we met before in, during the experiences or the events, uh, these face-to-face -face, uh, events in that moment. I will explain later what, what, how was the, the event the, um, about. So about the panic principles that were applied to Sustainable Tapas project, first we have five uh, principles, personal, accountable, normative, identity, relevant, and connected. In, term, in terms of personal, what we did, we after we uh, map all the cluster networks, our uh, more uh, potential 
behaviors uh, adopters that could spread to could spread the behavior into the those who were potentials or more uh, critical to the um, to the new ad, uh, adoption in terms of behavior of food diet. Uh, we started to send personalized message by email, by WhatsApp, Instagram, LinkedIn, even before we met. So we were pursuing and incentivizing people to come to our events. And then we were doing that after every event and after uh, even, even until now. Second, uh, make it uh, accountable, posting photos, videos of the events as participants to share on social media their daily challenge with the hashtag sustainable tapas. Third, the normative principle is uh, to build up a sense of reciprocity, uh, which was uh, uh, possible um, with face-to-face -face experiences, WhatsApp groups, for the identity relevant, uh, which is basically sharing a desirable identity as our target were more millennials living in Barcelona, which is a, a cosmopolitan city where people from different origins, from different ages are living here. Uh, we identified, okay, we are going to work with millennials, how we can bring their attention to a more appealing event, not only like uh, having a lunch or having a dinner. So that, <clears throat> that's why Sustainable Tapas idea or community came into reality, to share the experience first, to tasting um, tapas that are prepared in, in a sustainable, um, with sustainable ingredients, using this uh, gastronomy uh, background, which, is our, which are, which are the, the tapas that are well known, not only in Spain, but also worldwide. So we can bring them into, uh, bring the, uh, we can uh, took the attention of our possible participants. And also the, 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 the fifth principle was connected. We, uh, as I mentioned before, we, we map our cluster network, which means identifying the, my 10 strong ties in my own social network, including influencers, friends, and so on. Then we put into practice, we apply social marketing strategies, for example, uh, focus on behavior change in terms of uh, <clears throat> uh, behavior change in terms of food behavior. What, it, what is remarkable, it has to be easy and has to be transitional. That's why we were, up, I was, we were preparing or cooking easy recipes with local seasonal food. We're also giving during uh, during and after the event, when we were doing the tracking and the monitoring of the challenge, we were giving tips about zero waste apps, plant-rich diet, uh, and all the city resources that are available. And most, most of the time, people, they don't even know what are the seasonal products of the region, or they don't know what are these apps that are already available and, and that could help you to start this transition. Or most important, I was also related, um, sharing related, related research facts uh, of, on social media and how our, our food diet has a, a direct impact on climate change. Second, <clears throat> understand our audience. We were talking uh, before uh, about millennials. So millennials lifestyle is all about the experience. Uh, bringing sustainable branches or sustainable tapas night events as an experience. It was very, um, the, the event uh, gave us the opportunity to share into a more intimate space. Intimate, what I mean, uh, people were more open, sorry, people were more open to share their, their thoughts about starting a changing diet habits because they were already worried about climate change, but they didn't know that the way you eat has a higher or lower impact on climate change. So, and also they were sharing not only that, that um, concern, but also the awareness of food diet or food consumption in terms of food security, uh, in terms of how our politicians are involved or not into pursuing these, uh, po uh, the policies for helping citizens to, to change their diets, not only with food, but also with mobility, with 
with so many uh, sectors and behaviors related to, to human behavior. And third, uh, but not last, we, were want, we want to keep the social in social marketing, which means bringing gamification up, uh, applied into 15-day challenge and uh, sharing to our community. The events, these are the, the flyers we were uh, advertising since, since October last year from the, from the first to the last event. The last event, even though it was, uh, was done in a webinar because of the COVID crisis, we have to change our, our approach of the events. And as we see, we also have what, what what's very interesting is like, uh, at the beginning, one of the barrier, barriers was, even though I was inviting my friends, how to make them to come to my place and feel uh, comfortable to share and to, and to eat in a different way. They didn't know. So I, I wanted to approach them in a, as an invitation. What if we change a single abbey to take care of our planet? Uh, I'm bringing to the community, not only the vegans or the vegetarians, but any person. It doesn't matter what kind of diet you are following up or if you are a warrior or not in our climate action. And, and it was very interesting. People were very, very uh, uh, attracted to our way of communicating the events on social media, which means uh, uh, gra graphic designing um, um, all the all the strategies uh, you have to put into practice for example in Instagram which are more specific and I'm not going to go deeper in here right now but there are a lot of work behind this how to bring real awareness and not only uh, awareness but also make it appealing how to how to make signs appealing and attractive to millennials. That's very important. So we want to take this concept of tapas because yeah, I mean, I mean uh, my, my case or my network is in Spain, but because it was an easy way also to, to, to control the rations of food, bringing the tapas uh, concept into three dishes, first, second, and dessert with local seasonal and plant-rich uh, diet ingredients. And the concept of the tapas or the preparation themselves was based on these four principles. Um, based on uh, helping people to start a food diet transition based on flexibility principle. We, as I mentioned before, we, want, we are not pursuing as a, com as a community to only bring vegans or vegetarians. All, everybody was very, uh, very, uh, we were very open to invite them because it's also our challenge as a founder as, and, and also for the rest of the team. Every, every person of the team, they are following their own, their own path in terms of um, uh, food diet transition for, as a way to tackle climate change. Also, we, uh, as I, I as go, I, I'm going to explain it later, but we want to prepare tapas inspired in the cultural diversity background of participants. You are going to see that later. And we want to make tapas based on creativity and adaptation based of versatile ingredients. For example, if you see that the, 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 the big picture is a ceviche made of white beans, and I'm from Ecuador, from the Pacific coast. So we really love uh, seafood and ceviche is one of our main dishes. So how to create the same idea, but in a, with a versatile ingredient. In this case was um, white bean, but it could be lentils, for example. And then we were also um, uh, getting uh, introducing inspiring uh, ingredients in, based in my own cultural diversity, but not only me, but also from participants. And we add this uh, side dish, which you can see is fried plantain. May, some of you, you know what, what I'm talking about. Uh, they, this is very um, 
common in South America, but also in South Asian countries, I guess. And, and we, we were keeping doing that with all the tapas. But the, the tapas, the process of, or I will, I will, what I'm going to do now is like uh, explain you what, what were the events about. Okay, I was inviting people, what if we change one single habit to help the planet and, uh, about climate change? Uh, somebody say, jam, jam, yeah, fried platane is the best. <laughs> uh, and and uh, the structure of the event, as you see, it was a very, it was a very intimate space. Uh, so people were more open to share. So yeah, I was bringing, uh, um, we were having this structure of having a scientific talk of climate change, but a more friendly scientific talk on climate change, but at the same time having this tasting, uh, tapas tasting meeting. So we were dividing the event in three um, blocks. The first block, we were, yeah, we were talking and people were sharing about scientific talks, but at the same time, we were tasting the first tapas, the, the entry. Then the second, we were having a more discussion and, and, I was, I, and I was introducing them the idea to participate because it was optional, the idea to participate in the challenges. So then when the, that moment of the discussion was uh, starting, I brought the second uh um the second uh the second tapas and third we brought the 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 final dessert at the at the end so people were more uh, uh open to to share their ideas on not only of climate change but also about the event the the scope that we were using they were also open to 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 say i will i will be willing to to participate in the challenge or not until now, yeah, people were, we know that from a behavior dynamics and complex, complex contagions, individual action is, is important, but it's also possible when, when there are collaborative living. That's why the community is very important. In six months, we have 71 participants, we have run four events, and we have 900 members in LinkedIn. Uh, we know that we want to expand this structure. We have partners as well as uh, Maria mentioned, Cornell University, feeding cities from Switzerland, the, the food dove in New Zealand, Eura Foods, and obvio they are food, food sector companies from Barcelona specifically. And now we are working on some partners in Sweden, Vancouver, South Korea, Ecuador, Colombia, um, and uh, and others that I cannot mention now. So, <laughs> and the three, the three ideas that we have arrived until now about the community is like, it's important to have a collaborative mindset. It's important to permit and to give the space to a uh, cultural exchange among the participants and also having this community support in terms of uh, sustainable tapas team. No? In, in, not only the process of the event, but also after when they were uh, participating in the challenge, not only the challenge until now. So we were also um, working and um, following up some uh, surveys uh, that we, I will explain the results in, in, the, in the next slides, but we want also to know their insights and their opinions, what were their motivations to assist to a sustainable tapas, and which is remarkable, the participants were saying that they want to, to start the change of, of sustainable diet in a way to help the planner to learn more about sustainable habits. Then we were asking them, how could we improve the implementation of plant-based diet challenge as a plan to tackle climate change? This was a uh, question for our team or for myself to see how I, we can improve. And people were repeatedly uh, answering. Um, and they, they, for them, they, it's important to have a community uh, to let them people, uh, to let them to meet people, to know more about uh, habits, to, about diets, to be able to share, to include, to challenge themselves in, in a community in, a pro, in, in the process of a transitional diet habit. 
we were also having this, this was, this was very fun to have this final review. I was asking the, the, the participants, what if Sustainable Tapas is a, is a restaurant or is, is an event that is in TripAdvisor? How would you, <laughs> how you will rank it? So we will see they were, the, re, the responses were um, divided in these this three, four, these six sections. The, 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 uh, having the community to be able to share sustainable tapas, the experience, um, to change climate, to learn, to participate, to link with people, and to have more awareness about food, the influence of our food diet habits, because the prior or the events were very informative in terms of uh, changing habits, and also they were. Um, the project was also helping them to eat uh, with a lower impact in, 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 their, in, the, in our local context. So the results of our, our events, as we see, we were working with 34 participants and in 50 day challenges. The average age of participants was uh, 20, 20 years, uh, 28 years old. 40% of them were uh, um, completing the challenge, which is very was a very impressive result, which uh, means uh, in 117 plant-rich meals, and we have uh, 21,275 social media metrics. And most of the participants, 50%, are from Latin America. 30%, 38% are you were European and 12% were from North America. The number of participants by gender, 85% were female, which brings to, to me this, uh, this, uh, this conclusion of SINA. SINA is one of the World Economic Forum uh, advisors about why women are more involved in climate change actions. And then the motivation, it was very interesting to see the first motivation was changing to a healthy diet. So even though the motivation, um, uh, the, 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 the first or principal motivation was now tackling climate change, we have to take into, into our project or into our climate action this, uh, this result, because that will help us to make people to feel more secure or more um, more appeal to change their diet habits as you are also uh, reaching to to um, two objectives not only helping with the the, the climate the climate issue uh, but also changing your uh, diet to a healthy one and in terms of results uh, as we see we have the the in uh, as we were entailing the threshold of the average Spanish consumption in terms of beef supply uh, before and after the challenge, we see a decrease, but it was very impressive that the before the challenge was also below the threshold of the average Spanish, which are 30 grams. These, these values are in terms of, of grams. And what it means, a small reduction on, on the flesh consumption, specifically on beef, generates a great impact on CO2 fall levels. But not only that, we were also comparing the CO2 footprint before and after, and we, have, we were able to, to have a 41 reduction of CO2 emissions in our sample versus Spanish average values. These values are based on uh, the FAO and other uh, Public, uh, public sheets that are um, related to this. So at the end, our behaviors have an impact. Yes, for sure. If we are reducing, we were reducing in the, okay. If we are, um, we were able to reduce 41% in two weeks by, by changing and pursuing a, uh, this climate action, uh, we were avoiding the emission of 
uh, 0.37 kilograms of CO2 per person per day, which can be translated in 1.5 kilometers driving, uh, driven by an average passenger vehicle. Or for example, in, in, the, um, in the period of 15 days, we were, we were able to avoid with our 30 per, uh, 34 participants emission of 5.54 kilograms of CO2, which means 22 kilo, kilometers dri driven by an average passenger vehicle or a 707 number of smartphones charged. So we can have a broader, uh, a broader uh, impact uh, of the results. Sustainable tapas, these images are uh, some of the results we have brought into, into, into reality and the results we are achieving. For example, we were, cons we were published in Forbes China as, uh, as a successful climate action project uh, among all the climate action projects that are running by the Civic Ecology Lab of Cornell University and by, by Marian. And also we were, we were uh, every year here in Barcelona, there is the Mobile World Congress. And this year was canceled because of COVID virus. And even though all the startup ecosystem, they, they planned this event was called the Barcelona Tech Spirit. And there were one of the events was called Tech for SDG for the, sustainable development goals and we were participating in an open mic for startups how we can by changing our day uh, our diet habits we can have an impact on the SDGs and we for sure we have in some of them and these are also the pictures of our last event which was a webinar we have to adapt because we cannot we don't know when we were be able to gather again in our in our community, but we are working uh, on on this uh, phase of adaptation. So we have this Zoom, and we were still sharing how how to how to change our diet habits based based on the tapas uh, idea, but considering local, seasonal, and uh, plant plant based products that are from Catalonia. Barcelona and surrounds and, and also from Spain. So the future of sustainable tapas now I have explained all the experience until now but now what we are doing now is like we are bringing out the strategies to, uh, to start we are starting to have a national and international ambassadors network we are building up a worldwide community for, with uh, partners and collaborators from all the countries that I mentioned before. It's not only Europe, but also Asia and uh, South America. And we are working on developing a platform that will help us to, to help us as a team or as a project to run online summits, have cross-cultural webinars, uh, we are talking have these cross cultural webinars because we know this adaptation of diets is different um, uh, from every culture and every uh, social, economical, uh, sociolo sociological context. So we are working on that. For example, we are working with partners from Brazil, from Colombia, and from uh, from Ecuador, New Zealand. So you see, we have this ran diverse range of, of, of cultural uh, approach. We, we, we will be working in the future in an in a, in a app. And we are also working into inter-food sector partnerships. And uh, I want to share also some of the conclusion, conclusions that I, that uh, me, but also the team, we have, we have came to as a final final ideas and insights. We know that to adopt behaviors such as getting a, a, a plant rich diet may be required to pay the cost of time, deprivation, or even physical pain or the, the, 
the things that you have to 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 avoid in terms to change they have this habit that's that's why we need the social uh, reinforcement and that could happen that can be happen with the community support that will be greater for adopting these health behaviors or these uh, food behaviors uh, that was the case that happened in our in sustainable tapas project and also uh, the diffusion of real of, of these real um, diet behaviors may depend even more on cluster network structures. And also, if you you we were also uh, aware that people were struggling to make a change, we have participants. They were they were saying that they liked the event, the the scheme and the sections of the event, the content. They are aware of climate change. They are even doing research related, but they don't want to put it the way they eat. So, and they try it. They try it for one, three days. They try to change their diet habits, but at the end, it's like if you are struggling, anyone to make a change, it's not going to be super helpful to do it by your own. So, if your if your neighborhood or your school or your workplace doesn't offer something that will help you to do this transition, not only with food diet with other behaviors, uh, human behaviors that are uh, that have an impact on climate change, it, it's up to some other organizations to provide them. So that's the way, a way to see the impact of, uh, for example, in our case, to sustain all tapas and the impact we were able and we are uh, still able to see that we can give that a space. And also because uh, the more, uh, any organization, startup or universities, as Cornell is doing it, or other institution, institutions are um, uh, take it uh, upon themselves to provide these spaces, people will come and use them. And we can shape those spaces in a very smart way to direct these behaviors we want to see in our social and networks or in our com local community. So here, the last uh, slide, just to thank you everybody. I, I, I couldn't read, read them all the, all the questions that are in the, in the chat, but I will, we, we can start right now to, to discuss and to talk about that. And any questions, we, here yep. is my, my, my email and, Sorry, and you can follow us in our social media. We are on Instagram as uh, Sustainable Tapas. Great, thank you. That was great, Fatima. I think people are really inspired by everything you've done. So, I, and I've been keeping track of the questions, so don't worry about if you miss the chat. Uh, certainly, if you want to look at the chat, because there'll be more questions probably as we have our discussion, then then go ahead. But I <laughs> I um, copy and pasted the question so I can ask them. Um, I did want to ask, how long are you available for? Because we have a bunch of questions that might go past nine, more, ten more minutes. Yeah, yeah, I think ten more minutes will be will be, a, will be great to answer most of the questions. But if we don't have time, you can. You can, I would text, I would text my email here or okay. from the project. Okay, so do you need to leave in 10 minutes or can you stay a little longer? Well, we can have 15, 15 minutes. So okay, well just let us know when you need to leave because sometimes this, our discussions go on quite a long time. <laughs> so, but thank you for sharing your, your email. There was a question about, are you comfortable if we share your slides also? Yes, yes, yes absolutely. absolutely, no worries. Okay, so UA, I think UA, if you don't mind typing in the chat where we can share the slides, we'll definitely be, and you're comfortable sh if we share the recording uh, in YouTube, right? Okay. Yeah, everything. Okay, great. Okay, so um, let me just ask uh, some of the questions that we had. Um, there was a question, it was from the beginning from Sarah Vanesh who asked, uh, why didn't you make connections with NGOs? At least, and maybe you have, 
in the second, you know, after you finished the first project, just with your social network, but sort of generally about NGOs and if you're collaborating with them? Well, um, we are, I mean, we are um, focusing on uh, food communities. It doesn't mean there have to be uh, NGOs specifically, but uh, we want to bring as a partners, um, uh, stakeholders are, are more strategical because we want to uh, start to bring more, uh, more the, this shape of community and then we will bring this, uh, the idea to start the startup, even though we are still working on the business model, how to translate this into a business model. So we are having these two, um, these two uh, lines of, stake, of stakeholders or, or partners as well. Uh, NGOs or universities or from an educational perspective, which, which is very, very important in this topic because as I mentioned before, here in, uh, and I, I, I don't know if people are related to this, um, to this, uh, this um, pre premise that I'm going to say, people don't know what, are the, what is seasonal, what is local. You have no idea. People are not educated how to buy. So what we are doing is like uh, doing uh, partnerships with uh, zero waste, food transition, uh, sustainab sustainability communities in Barcelona, and all the other regions in the world. And that could be food sector companies or food, sec uh, food communities. So that's, that's our, 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 our two scopes in terms of uh, partnership. Okay, great. So um, I think there were a number of people who were interested in maybe doing a project like this or maybe even doing your project. So there was some person that asked, said that he was interested or she was thinking about doing this with their high school students. And another person talked, asked about student clubs or sort of different community organization like Toastmasters clubs, which I think is a debate society. Um, so if, if somebody wanted to join and sort of copy this model, what would you advise them? I mean, is there an opportunity to collaborate with you, are you going to have regional, you know, sustainable? Like, are you are you going to brand sustainable tapas if people want to call and event that? How would they go about that? Uh, as I, I was sharing at the end, we want we are building this ambassador network. So we are uh, for those who are interested in that my that this um, scope, this uh, this model of sustainable tapas staples can be applied to your network uh, we can discuss this uh, uh, further in an email or having a, a zoom meeting uh, because we are working on expand our ambassadors network and how will be how will we be this collaboration into practice so we as i mentioned before we put into practice uh, most of the material uh, that was shared and lectured during the Climate Action Fellowship, but also it was also the richness of having diverse, um, the diverse, um, how to say, members in our team. Mm -hmm. uh, that is called it, that is enriching in how to bring more, more, and more impact. So I think uh, it will be better to adapt the model in terms of, of cultural background, so as I mentioned, sociological, economical, and what kind of um, target in terms of demographic you want to work with. Because that will be uh, defer the, the concept uh, in, in the project. And then we are also um, aware that, that this, we are also working on adapting the, um, the model to other uh, behavior or human behavior um, impacts in climate change that is not only related with food. So, yeah, I'm, we are more than open, me and, and the team to, to, to share and to collaborate and to bring more. The, f the first figure that, that I can answer this question is the ambassador network that we are working now. 
So is the idea that you will have, you will train, say, a group of ambassadors that could be anywhere in the world, and then they can then implement the project? Yes, because it is, uh, it's, re, it's replicable. It, it can be, repl uh, it can be re replicable. I don't know if that's the word. Yeah, replicated. It can, uh, replicated. it can be replicated. So the first step will be to um, identify those ambassadors and uh -huh. what is the prospect of their own climate action in terms of sociological, demographic, and all the collaborations we can have with them. That's, what, that, that's the point that we are doing now. For example, we are working um, with, with some ocean and sea organizations uh -huh. in Ecuador and also with um, more into food security institution in Colombia. Uh -huh. So it's very diverse. And we are also working here with more uh, bringing partnerships with the food sector manufacturers. And, and companies. So I cannot give you an, 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 an one answer because it depends what is the profile of, of, the, of the partner. Uh -huh. So is it more educational or it is more um, um, business, business, uh, business uh, based solutions? Mm. Okay, great. And you said that you did your last event online. So for example, if I wanted to start this online with a group that I'm in, or uh, maybe my high school students, or student club, uh, do you have any suggestions, say if we want to just do something very soon? Mm, I think, um, do you, I think what, in terms of, um, managing or planning a, a, this kind of events in webinars, you have to be very, very specific first mm -hmm. and be really, really focused on what is your target. But because I, I guess in all your countries, we have seen so many options of webinars and uh, online meetings and mm -hmm. how to bring the attention among all the uh, of all these offers that are, are, are now, because now we are more connected, but we want to be more selective. Mm. So I think it's important to be very, very specific who and how you want to reach with your uh, climate action. And maybe because we don't have the ability uh, now to have this face-to-face -face communication or meetings, maybe you can support yourself with other a small or medium um, organizations in your, in your local network that can be helpful in terms of advertising the event or uh, helpful in terms of spread the work of the, of the climate action. Just as we did here in Barcelona, we, we did it, we, we looked for a sponsor to guarantee that event, the webinar event where very smooth and everything was perfect in terms of logistics. So we did it with Impact Hub, which is um, which is a worldwide um, company or a startup company in terms of having these co-working spaces. So they are also looking for new ways to collaborate and partner. So that that's a good strategy that I can that can that I can share with people that are starting right now with their own climate actions. Okay. So um uh are, so uh, so apparently some people are getting feedback. So thanks Jen. I'll try to mute myself when Fatima's uh responding. So there are several questions about how the participants in your sustainable tapas brunches, how they reacted, if you had any people that, for example, they didn't want to come because it was about the planet or just in general, sort of what was the reaction when you started planning these events? Well, uh, for the four events, the first, especially the first and the second was very difficult, even though I was, reaching my own social network and I have this 
they already met me because I was working on climate change from more uh, from all my own research, research work. Uh, and I think this when you, uh, I don't know how to answer, but at the beginning, I, sometimes I have to uh, <laughs> to beg <laughs> to please be, to ask my friends, can you come? It's going to be free. But at the but because they, they were not aware of what they were expecting about the event, and because I was doing it by my own. I mean, I was organizing all the events, the cooking, the advertising, and uh, well, with the help with the help of my of my flatmates. But but oh, I, I didn't have any support for any or or any yeah, any support of any NGO or any local network. So it was harder at the beginning, but after the two events, uh, and because I was also working a lot on, on bringing up a social network, social media network, so then the word started to spread and pe more people were interested in the, in, the, in the project and in the event. And also was helpful to not only send personalized emails or messages, but also I was, because I was in that moment, I was finish, finishing uh, the, first, the, the first final chapter of my PhD. So I was in the middle of doubting what, I, what should I pursue of my own personal career, professional career. So I was also using LinkedIn, and, which is more a professional platform to bring these kind of um, projects, not only as a climate action network, but also as a, um, as a professional um, result or product. And also, I was also f um, uh, trying to pursue, uh, um, I mean, I, 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 that's what I did. I, I wanted to have the assessment, the results, uh, the measures before, during, and after. So that can be also by, be my, my baseline and my, my, the, the, the solid background that I need to the beginning of the beginning of my project. So then after the third and the fourth, and, the, and in the fourth event, I was also inviting, inviting an influencer in Instagram, which, also, which is also my friend. She has more than 20,000 followers, which is, is a lot <laughs> it's in Instagram. So, we were we were also in the process of this experimental in the in the in the experimental phase we were also doing a lot of experiments we were doing um, put into practice and then changing things in terms of what was was more appealing and i think these these specific strategies were working in my own reality of my own social network and climate change action so I don't know, but that would be helpful, but it could be helpful to join forces with people that are already on social media influencing on zero waste or plant rich diets. But, but for sure, if you want to assure that your climate action is reinforced in the, in the community, you have to assess the results, the, the, the process, and, but also the results to have this co commitment from the people, but also to building up your own trust and to have more and more, more, more partnership or collaborations. Uh, did I answer the question? I don't know. Yeah, oh, okay. Sorry, uh, sorry, I had to unmute myself. <laughs> so the, thank I have, you. I see another question. Are recipes provided so people can hold their own? So everything was provided the presentations, but also the recipes. Um, for each event, we were also that they uh, being very diversifying the, the recipes. Um, yeah, the posters were very attractive and appealing. That's also another way that we want to be assured that our mission of the project was um, was well communicated on, on social media, and it has to be appealing. Um, 
I don't know. I'm reading them. The, okay, the so I can tell you another one. <laughs> so somebody was interested in how you did that carbon calculation. Did you use a, some sort of calculator? Like when you said how many C CO2 emissions, the amount of CO2 emissions that were avoided? Yeah, when I use it, I used um, as a threshold, or I want to entail as a threshold what is the Spanish average uh, beef. I was very specific with the participants, no, because at the beginning I was very ambitious. So I want them to change all their diets, and that's impossible. So I started with the most, uh, uh, the most. Um, source uh, or the most contaminated source of, of pro animal protein, which is beef. And there is another one, but it, I, I focus on beef. So I took as a baseline uh, a Spanish average of, of beef supply for consu consumption and also what was the, pro the food print uh, production in the Spanish average value. And then the way to measure, I, what I did is uh, before and after surveys, and I used some uh, samples to measure, to help people to measure their own, um, their own um, consumption of beef. So what I did is, is that I did it on Excel considering the CO2, the official uh, beef supply consumption in Spain and also the CO2 footprint uh, for the Spanish, uh, the, for the average Spanish uh, value. Um, uh, that's the way I did it. But they have, they're, they're, and to be able to translate this into a more specific uh, emission reductions, I use uh, the environmental uh, agency uh, footprint calculator. You have to be very, very aware what kind of uh, footprint calculations are using because there is a lot of websites that are not uh, they are not scientific based. So you have to be very, very, very aware, and also be very aware if you are using CO two uh, um, amounts uh, equ equivalent or not which is also, uh, that, that's why if you use the, FA, the, the FAO or the, a, the APA um, uh, documents and, and public uh, numbers, it would be helpful to do this, um, to this uh, equivalency in terms of CO2 emissions that have been avoided uh, per person, per day, and for 15 days. Did you, um, when you say you use the, is this the EPA, American um, Environmental yes. Protection Agency calculator? Okay, okay, great. Yes. Thank you. Um, and then somebody asked, what are some of the biggest barriers or obstacles to face? For, for the Spanish, for the Spanish values, I, there is a, I can share it. There is a, there is a file, uh, there is a, there is a, um, Food consumption uh, sheet that there is, is uh, that is, is is specifying what are the surplus or the balance uh, in terms of footprint per person and um, animal protein supply consumption in every country in the world. That was also very helpful because it's not the same. The, the food diet in Spain as well as it is in, in, in the States or in any country uh, around the world. So you have to be very, very careful which are your sources. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, can you hear me? Oh, thanks. Okay, great. Um, sorry about the interference. And thanks, I think it was UA that muted me so that that wouldn't happen. Um, Oh, and then, oh yeah, so the other question was obstacles or barriers. What are some of the biggest barriers and how did you address them or overcome them? The main barriers, I think, um, well, at the beginning was most of the trust based, uh, the trust base uh, in the project because people were, it was new, I didn't have this 
this support from other NGO, any organization. So I have to build up my own, <laughs> my own uh, trust uh, related to sustainable tapas from the beginning, which, in, uh, which means in to do a double effort. So that's why I'm very precise to say that it's better to have this, this support from uh, any high school club or other organ, um, local community organizations. And second, during the, during the most challenging was during the challenge. There were people that they, they were very appealing to participate. They, were, they, were, they had this awareness about climate change, but they, it was very difficult to them to follow up the, the, um, the requests we were making during the challenges, which were, at the beginning, we had uh, very ambitious objectives. And then at, after the first week, I realized, okay, hum we humans, we need less barriers. So let's be very, less ambitious at this. And that's why we, we decided to focus more on the, on the beef, on, on beef consumption is, instead of all the animal protein consumptions. And also what we did is sometimes uh, people were not uh, uh, posting social media. So less, uh, what we did is like put, put aside all the barriers to help them to, to pursue the challenge. So uh, being very, very active in the WhatsApp groups, in the social media, I mean, you have to follow up and monitor, for, uh, follow up the tracking of people during the challenges. That, that was the most challenging. So that's also why we are also working on, um, on the application that I cannot give more details, but we are working to be more uh, efficient on, on those on those specific tasks. So how do you solve? It? Yeah, how do how do I solve it? Uh, as, um, at the beginning, with the with the with the team with the sustainable team that I was creating with the collaborators with what uh, that I was having. We were also exchanging our exchanging feedback after each event to see people's reaction. And also, we, I was working with my own social network. I was asking my own friends after every uh, every event what were what were their expectations and what was their the results of the events or the impact the the, the event ha, has it in in their in their daily life. And also, how do I solve it? I, I contact one of the colleagues on the fellows for the first Climate Action Network, which is um, Lisa, I guess it's Lisa, from the Philippines. And she was very, very helpful to exchange uh, her own experience, what was working, what did it not work, you cannot build up a community in terms of climate change or actions by only posting in social media. So be careful because people want to trust in you, trust in what you are doing as a project and uh, they will do. People, uh, I believe that people learn by, by, by doing, but also by example. So when we were posting every day, we, 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 which was every day during 15 days, I was the first doing it. And giving, giving, it, uh, giving the participants uh, uh, tips how to do it, where to buy. And after that, uh, after that point, the participants were doing the same among them. Even though they were, co they were competing with, among them who were doing the best in, during the challenges, they started to share where and how to buy, where you can have uh, access to, to, to cheaper options of sustainable ingredients, or what are the applications or the city resources or it's the city infrastructure that is already available and most of the people they don't know. So that was very, very nice to see. So that's 
that it's in the best way to solve the, the obstacles is to clean the path uh, from those barriers that make yourself, like put yourself in, in the participant's position. What barriers you should think will you will be facing and will maybe um, uh, make you to doubt to change your diet, your, your human behavior. Uh, in general. Okay, so thank you. Um, actually, Yue Li has a question. Yue, do you want to unmute yourself and ask your question? Yeah, thank you so much, Fadima, for this great presentation, inspiring uh, ideas. I just uh, wonder, uh, I understand you mentioned this is a startup. So I just wonder how you, uh, you know, what is your business model to make it sustainable, your, your own organization? To be sustainable <laughs> well we are working on that we are work that's that's what i i mentioned in the final slides because uh, we are working in two sides bring, bringing and building up this community but also how to make uh, how, how to make uh, to make it a, a sustainable business um, we are working on that, so I cannot share it. <laughs> Sorry, but we will share it. We will share it later. But if you have any ideas, what we are doing is, uh, in general terms, what we are doing is um, uh, make it su successful and economical, sustainable in terms of community, but also giving. Um, uh, or giving advising uh, to other organizations that we might ask to help us to help them. For example, some food sector companies they need this insight so they can uh, build up a loyalty relationship with their con consumers or clients. Or, for example, to build up uh, um, or to bring new 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 products in the market. And also, we are working to bring an, uh, an app that, that, that is considering not only the food diet uh, behavior, but also other behaviors related with footprint, uh, human footprint, uh, but not the typical calculation of footprint, but also consider other concepts related with uh, my research field, which is ecosystem services. That, that's that 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 that's some, there are some of the insights that I can share until now. Sure, thank you. Well, good luck with your business model. I'm looking forward to learning more about it. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so and, and as you build your team, do you have a nutritionist, or will you have a nutritionist? Are you looking for? We are we are working um, at the partner that we have in Colombia. She. Uh, she's a nutritionist and she has worked on the and um, in the na, how do you say biotechnology nanotechnology applied to to food in, food um, food products so mm -hmm. she is working more into how food security is aligned to um, human rights which is a very nice perspective. So we will start working with her as an ambassador and then also having her feedback as a nutritionist. Okay, great, great. Um, I just have one more question. I think, um, yeah, so um, I don't know if you were on for Dr. Santola's presentation last week, but anyway, do you, he, he talked about if you want to spread from one network to another, you not you have to have people in your original network that are peripheral member, like they have your interest. Let's just say they're interested in sustainable foods, and so they're in they're in your student network. But maybe they're also part of another club that's interested in something related, but not exactly the same so therefore you spread from network to network to network but you have to have sort of more than one bridge person between the two networks or multiple networks so did you think about that or have you thought about that as you've because seems like you're spreading very rapidly the idea anyways if you have 900 linkedin 
followers. I, I don't know they're all doing sustainable tapas, but at least they're interested. But if you want to, you know, actually have people like reduce beef consumption or whatever the goal is, it seems like you have to have not only those people that you have close ties with, but people that also have close ties with another network. Yes, that's why, for example, that's why we have brought uh, the, the conception of uh, ambassador network. And we are uh, identifying those partners or um, potential collaborators that are, they have this uh, professional, uh, strong and medium tie with me or the team of sustainable tapas or with the concept of sustainable tapas, but they are also involved with other networks in their um, in their locations. For example, uh, one of the, our possible ambassadors, uh, she's from Ecuador, from my home country, and she has a, a, a ecological hostel in front of the Pacific coast, but she has her business, but she's also involved in some ocean ocean leadering cleaning uh, projects and communities or or ocean pollution awareness um, platforms so that's why we she's my, my uh, she's a friend of mine but she's also a business uh, person and also she's involved in these um, uh, com local communities so that would be helpful to to build up not only a spread spread the network uh, rapidly that which is not the best maybe the best solution for climate action behaviors um, but it's also like being replicable to those ambassadors that are already linked involved in um, in local networks for example we have another example from uh, the from Colombia the this, uh, this, she, uh, she is a colleague of mine of, for, from, from years ago, and, she's, and she has been working on the nutrition and the biotechnological solutions for food. But she's also involved in, in this movement, which is called a Slow Food International, mm -hmm. a Slow Food uh, Community. Mm -hmm. uh, she's collaborating with them, and she's also a lecturer in food security to a group of nutritionists in in um, in a university located in the Cari in the Caribbean region of of Colombia. So that's that's the way I'm identifying or mapping this this ambassador network so that can be replicable because I I will not be able to be or sustainable tapas um, uh, Barcelona team cannot be in in those uh, locations and and uh, and finding a way to replicate the model and the community is ambassador network for sure and be very 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 um, specific what kind of uh, ambassadors you want in your network that's also very important that's why most of the ambassadors are people that have been I have been working with sustainability, not only with this climate action from September last year, but I have been working with sustainable agricultural projects 10 years ago, since 10 years ago. So I identify those, they already know my work, but also they want to know, uh, they want to participate and I, they see the potential to replicate sustainable tapas in their own local networks. Okay, great. So thank you so much. There's people that are, uh, Jen Hook from Hingham, Massachusetts says she's going to follow you on Instagram. People loved your graphics and your, gra they, uh, you should congratulate your graphic designer. Um, <laughs> and I think you've inspired a lot of people. And also, I, I think it was great because you've integrated both the plant rich side and the persuading other people side that we're trying to integrate in this webinar series and in our network climate action course. So um, I just want to thank you so much. It's a great final webinar for our series. I see it's Augustina Suskun. Is what kind of Augustina Suskun? 
Agustina Sueskun, she's our graphic designer. And she, if you want to <laughs> ask for advice, she, I, I, she will be more than happy. So I, I'm writing down her name. And yeah. I guess she, I don't know if she's in Instagram. Uh, well, but, if, but yeah, I, I think you can, you can uh, search for her name in LinkedIn or in Instagram. I guess she will be okay if we share her. Puede ver cuál es el nombre? Just give me a moment just to, to share if there's someone is. Okay. Okay. She's right there. Yeah, that's her oh. Instagram profile. If someone will <laughs> would like to to have her advice for on her illustration and graphic designing because she uh, she she captured the the concept of sustainable tapas sustainable tapas very very well. Okay, okay, great. Well, I think you really really inspired a lot of people, and I look forward to continuing our conversation, Fatima, because I want I'm I'm inspired also in thinking about how I might ad adopt or adapt your project. Maybe I can be one of your ambassadors. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We will be, I will be very happy to, we, me as, and the team, we will be very, very happy to really spread the word and, and building up a, uh, a, this a strong community. But also I have to be very, very precise that the, the you, Marianne, inspires me. And I think the, the work that everybody was doing during their, their climate action was very, very inspi inspiring for me. Mm. Uh, meeting uh, Lisa, even though it was uh, by exchanging emails, and seeing that there are more communities and projects that are related with this, uh, with with the perspective of cl uh, tackling climate action, is also very, um, is very inspiring. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Thank you, for everybody, and you can follow up in Instagram. Sustain, uh, sustainable tapas and we you can write it uh, write it down into our email which is sustainable tapas uh, 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 no, how do you say <laughs> sorry at sustainable tapas, uh, sustainable tapas at gmail.com and we, we will be uh, we will be the team and I more than pleased and happy to to collaborate to work with and to to bring you new new collaborations great thank you so much so um ua did you want to have any announcements 